turn to the Gospel of St. Luke, the 24th chapter, and the 5th verse, St. Luke 24 and 5. There in St. Luke 24 and 5, you can find these words. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. Luke 24 and 5. And I'm going to pull my subject out of that verse. And it'll be thus led. Why seek ye the living among the dead? You may be seeking. Why seek ye the living among the dead? I'd like to know from you this morning, do you serve a living God? Or is your God counted among the failed faiths of lost generations? Many, many today serve a God of some kind, often they found their gods powerless. Helped them live better, climb higher, <coughs> and achieve their goals. If you would this morning, consider the man and his daughter who visited a museum of great religion while on their summer vacation. In the museum, there were statues of the founders of many of the great world faiths. There was Buddha, who taught his followers about inner peace. Buddha has 245 million followers. There was Confucius, the great Chinese thinker, and wise man whose ideas dominated the eastern part of the world. There was Mohammed who taught Islam to millions, saying he was the last prophet of God. As the little girl moved from stature to stature, depicting even the mythical Greek gods, Zeus and Thor and others, after strolling down many hallways, reading the notes on the religious shrine of the past. We find that she asked a father a very pregnant question. She said, Father, where is the statue of Jesus? The father responded, these are the failed gods of the past. Buddha was great, but he did. Confucius was wise and influential, but he's dead. Yeah. Mohammed was a mighty leader, mm -hmm. but he's dead. Yes. If you want to find Jesus, you can't find him here. 
Because Jesus is alive. He lives within your heart. Today, 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 there are many who entrust their faith to dead God. That offer them only defeat and failure. Even though things they have trusted have proved empty and valueless, many still cling to them in vain efforts in order to find happiness as well as success. Oh, my friends, whether these gods are represented this morning by red ideas, a mere creature of comforts, all of them have proven to be void of life. However, however, we serve a living God. Amen. A living God that is with us each and every day. Amen. That is the joy of this Christian life. Yes. Amen. There's no place where the body of Christ is on this display. There's no crib that holds his body for our stricken crowds to fly by in wonder. Those who travel to the place where he lay in the Holy Land expect to find just what they see, an empty tomb. For he is risen. I want you to know that he's not there in that tomb. Because I traveled to Jerusalem and I went to the place where they laid his body. I went inside the tomb and examined it for myself. And I can stand here today and tell you it's an empty tomb. Oh, amen. He's hallelujah. alive. Yes, hallelujah. Yeah. He is alive today. Yes. This season of the year reminds us of the living faith that we have been given as sons and daughters of God. It is a faith that keeps us looking toward the future and helps us turn our backs on the dead works of the past. Yeah. As Christians this morning, we remind ourselves constantly that we serve a risen Savior who has given us new life and power on this earth as a foretaste to the great rewards that are to come after this life is over. When we want to realize the power of God, we can find him in a moment because he's only a prayer away. This text this morning focuses on the words of the angel as they told the women who came to the tomb that Christ had kept his word and was truly risen from the grave in keeping with his own prophecy which was given on numerous occasions. The angels noticing his resurrection tagged a 
parenthetical phrase to the end of that pronouncement, they stated as he said. This was a reminder to the women that the empty tomb was not by chance, but by design. Christ said many things with respect to his destiny. Sometimes what he said was vague and could be misunderstood. When the Jews asked him for a sign of his deity, he told them in John 2.19, destroy this temple. And in three days, yeah. I will raise it up again. Yeah. Yeah. They mistook what he said to mean rebuilding the temple of Zerubbabel and Herod in three days. When he actually meant reclaiming his life after three days. Yeah. There were other things he said about the resurrection that were as clear as day. In Mark 8.31, he told his disciples that after three days, he would rise again. And he began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and of the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and after three days rise again. In Matthew 12 and 40, he said, and Job was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. So must the Son of Man lay in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. Even in the enemies, remember what he said in Matthew 27 and 63. The scribes and the Pharisees went to the authorities and pointed out that he said he would be in the grave three days and three nights. Therefore, they wanted a guard put around the tomb in order to prevent his disciples from taking his body and claiming that he had risen. Jesus told his followers as well as the skeptics that his deity would be confirmed by the rabbinical three-day test. According to Jewish custom, a person's death was followed by three days and three nights of mourning. They were called the days of weeping. These three days of weeping were followed by four days of lamentation, making a full week of mourning. Well, did gods only frustrate the living? Today, there are many people who spend their lives in frustration or devotion to dead gods. Yes, they bow at the altar before them and plead to them their time, their talent, as well as their resources. Oh, oh, my friend, how many, amen, have given their whole lives, uh-huh, in pursuit of fame, in pursuit of glory, only to find out that that was only the wrong way to go. Well, if I were you this morning, how many have 
have sought wealth with all of their might. Only learn that wealth is a means to an end, and not an end within itself. How many, how many have bowed themselves low before the God of career and success, and have devoted uh, all of their time and all of their energy to achieve the ever-elusive success without considering, good God Almighty, that uh, they need the Lord in uh, their lives. I heard the Lord ask the other day, what does it profit a man yes. if he gain the whole world and then uh, lose his soul? Our present dilemma is like that of ancient Israel that sought to achieve success by looking to the dead gods, uh -huh, that they might worship them. Yes, since others seem successful worshiping uh, Baal, they too gave everything that they had for the worship of this dead God. God called uh, this whole system the God Almighty uh, of worshiping Baal. Uh, he called it to a showdown. He, he had <coughs> Elijah, yes, to go yonder to Mount Carmel. And Elijah said, uh-huh, we're going to have a showdown. And uh, how long Halt ye between two opinions. If Baal be Baal, then you worship him. But if God be God, we're going to worship him. And he said we're going to have a showdown today. We're going to test the God. And yes. the real God is going to answer by fire. Good God Almighty. Yes, and when the Time came, uh, the real God answered by fire. Amen. Up all the water around <coughs> the altar and burn up all the false gods. Well, serving a living God. Yes. yes, you and I serve a living God. Jesus is real. <laughs> Jesus is the main deal. Yes. Do I have a witness? Yes. Anybody here know him? Does anybody here worship him? Yes. Does anybody here love him? Amen. Good God Almighty, isn't he all right? Amen. Isn't he all right? If he's all right, say yeah. Yes. Yes. Say yeah. Yes. Do you love him? Yes. Yeah. 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 I love him. What about you? Yeah. What about you? Yeah. And you and you. Man. Thank God today. Yeah. Thank God that he lives. Yes. Thank God that he is the real people. Amen. Man. Amen. Amen. This is why we are in service this morning. Because we love the Lord. Because Man. we recognize. Amen. That he is a living Savior. Yeah. Amen. That yeah. he is a living Savior. Amen. Think about how much he loved you. Yes. Amen. He left the royal coats of glory. Came all the way. Down into this mean and murderous world. Yeah. Amen. He was crucified. Amen. Went to the grave. He rose on the third day. According to the scriptures, because he was born in Amen. To bring man and God back together. There had been a rift in their relationship and in their fellowship. But Jesus came and he fixed it so that through the aid of the gospel, you and I can have a right relationship 
with the Father. Amen. Amen. All we have to do is just believe that he died for your sins. Believe that he was buried. Believe he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says you and I believe that that we can be saved. You can be saved today by just believing that Jesus died for your sins. Amen. This time, if you want to receive Christ, we invite you to come and take a seat.